Do you need more traffic to your website? Well, if that's the case, stay tuned. We're going to help you build traffic to your website today. How do I bring my faith to work? How do I tap into the power of God in my work-life call? Why am I going through this adversity? Is God mad at me? I'm Oz Hillman, and I've been helping leaders like you answer these questions and more for over 30 years. That's what this podcast is all about. Let's learn and grow together. Welcome to TGIF. Today, God is first. Well, welcome everybody to TGI If It Work podcast. I'm delighted to have a special guest with me today, James Upjohn. And I've actually been working with James for, uh, I guess, over a month now. And he's been helping us in the area of SEO, search engine optimization. And James, uh, has a southern accent uh, from England. <laughs> no, he's uh, he's over there in the pond, and uh, I was introduced to him uh, just a few months ago. And uh, James is a kingdom business leader, and he has a great expertise. And so, James, uh, welcome to our podcast this week. Thanks so much for having me, Oz. I really appreciate it. So, um, SEO is designed to help us all build more traffic to our websites. And so if you are a business owner or you manage a website or have anything to do with building traffic to a website, this session is for you. And so we're going to dive into it. And uh, James's background, he's been in this for over 15 years, has his own business helping companies uh, drive traffic to their websites. He also has a coaching program that uh, if you want to learn about how to use SEO, then uh, he's your man. And uh, I can personally say that we hired James about a month ago, a little over a month ago, to help us build traffic to our TGIF Today God is First site. And he's doing an awesome job. And we're seeing increase. And he was able to go in and look at our systems, look at things that have been broken. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of things in our background that needed to be adjusted. And he knew where to look, what to change, what things needed to be added. And so it's an investment that's very worthwhile if you are trying to build a business using traffic on your website. So, James, let's, let's jump into some of uh, some of this today, and I tell us a little bit about the history of Google and how searches show up on a page, and anything you want to kind of give us the the one hundred and one version of SEO. Yeah, absolutely. So SEO is, um, as you've already said, search engine optimization, and basically all that means in simple terms is that you can optimize a website to appear higher up in the Google search results when somebody is doing a search for any product or service. And so I'm sharing my screen now. Can you see that okay, Oz? I can. Fantastic. So I can see here, I've typed plumbing Miami into Google. And as a marketer and a search engine optimizer, I install, um, let's say, apps just to break it down simply, I install different extensions and plugins that will allow me to see how many people are searching for any search that I put in. So I can see here that 3,600 people per month go to Google and type in Plum in Miami. There's 3,600 people a month looking for a plumber in the Miami area for that specific keyword. Of course, we can see there's plenty of other keywords here that somebody might put in. Commercial plum in Miami, for example. I can see that 70 people a month are searching for that. So if you was to show up at the top of the Google search results, either in the maps or in the organic listings, these are just free listings that are on the first page of Google, or in the sponsored ads, you're going to get some of these people actually clicking through to your offer and seeing what products and services that you offer. If you're on page two, page three, page four, page five, nobody's going to see your offer at all. So really, you want to be showing up on the first page of Google, your website, your offer needs to be here 
on the first page when somebody's searching to be in with a chance of them seeing your offer and hiring you for your services. So what is search engine optimization? It's just basically understanding exactly what it is that Google wants to rank a business on the first page of Google. It's basically a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. How good is your website? Okay, so for example, if I just go back to Plum in Miami and take a look at this, 3,600 searches a month, in order for you to rank on the first page of Google, the most obvious thing would be your website should be about plumbing and you should be based in Miami. Google doesn't want to be put in websites that are about sausages if somebody's searching for plumbing Miami because ultimately they want the search engine to be a good user experience for whoever's doing that search. So a little bit of a history about that is Google was founded in 1998 and they said – the existing search engines that existed, like Alta Vista, um, they didn't provide relevant results. So the founders of Google said, what can we actually do to provide a better search engine that it actually shows the things that people are looking for rather than a mismatch of results? Mm. And so it was a very, very rudimentary system when they first started where they said, okay, what we could do is we can make sure that the words are mentioned on the actual web page, and we can make sure that the title has the thing that the person's searching for. And, and they created something, as I said, really quite rudimentary. And it, when they created it, it was already light years ahead of anything that already existed. The problem was, though, that people quickly realized what it took to rank on the first page of Google. I just need to put that search many, many times on my website. If I just say, hey, um, we are a plum in, Miami, plum in Miami company that specializes in plum in Miami. If you need plum in Miami, come and visit us today at plum. Those websites were ranking at the top of Google. And so then Google said, oh, we've created a problem now. This is being really, really spammed. So Google said, okay, then we need to figure out a way where it said enough times, but not too many times that it upsets the end user. And so from 1998 to where we are today, Google's introduced new rules. They're actually called algorithms, but we'll just say rules of what, what makes a good website and what makes a bad website. Mm. And as an SEO, it's my job to determine by looking at what's already on the first page of Google, what does Google consider to be a good website versus a bad website? Because they don't want to give the keys to the kingdom. They give you enough to understand a little of how it works, but not enough to allow people to have all of the answers because then they face the same problem that people would literally just go in, fix it exactly as it should be and take the number one spot. So there's an air of mystery around it. And that's where it's the job of the marketer to figure out what that is and do the right things. Does that make sense? Yeah, so uh, I noticed uh, sponsored versus non-sponsored. Tell us about sponsored uh, listings. So sponsored listings are where you can actually pay Google every time somebody clicks on your listing. So I can see here, it says here CPC $4.28. So it, if if I if I was to, sorry, sorry Oz. If I was to click on Rapid Router right now, it would cost them approximately $4.28 to get that click from me to be in on their website. It's not an exact science because this is just an average price. So it could be slightly higher, it could be slightly less, but you can write an ad for your website and you can say, anytime somebody searches this keyword, I want to be appearing in the sponsored listings. And then you would pay every time somebody clicked. So you can imagine if a thousand people type this per month and clicked on Rapid Router and it was costing them an average of four dollars, they're going to be spending four thousand dollars a month to get a thousand people visiting their website every single month. Gotcha. Here's the difference: they're the sponsored listings which you have to pay for. Underneath the maps is there's no sponsored here. These ones have got to the first page of Google by doing good SEO. They figured out how to get onto the first page of Google. And so if they're an SEO expert themselves, they can optimize the website and get it to the number one spot for minimal cost. Alternatively, 
they can pay somebody who knows how to do SEO to optimize their website. And over the course of a few months, they can increase the client's website and where it is showing up in the search results until it gets up onto the first page of Google. Now, if I was to click this Yelp listing, it wouldn't cost Yelp anything at all because they've got the number one organic listing. It's a free listing. Okay. Now, Yelp's going to be spending money to, to optimize their website and get it to the top of the search results. But once it's there, any click is free. Yep. So one of the things that you've been helping us do is you, we've actually gone through, say, our devotional, and we've, we've seen what types of words. We take a title of a devotional, and then we go in and look for search words on the internet that people are searching for and then come back and incorporate that into the devotional in order to show up uh, in the search engine, comment about kind of that whole strategy. Yeah. So again, sticking with the plumbing Miami theme, just because that's what's loaded. Yeah. So the blue text at the top of any listing is called the title. That's what we name the page of our website. And if we look that we search for plumbing Miami, you can see this first listing has got the word plumbing in the title and it's got the word Miami. So it makes it very, very relevant to that search. Mm -hmm. If we look at number two, we can see it's got the word plumbing, it's got the word Miami. Position number three has got plumbers and it's got the word Miami. And we can see here Miami plumbers, right? So everyone that's on the first page of Google is using a variation of this keyword in the actual title tag. Does that make sense so far? Yep, absolutely. And then if we also look at the description underneath, which is the meta description for the page, we can see that the bold text is plumbing, Miami, plumbing. It's got plumbing here, plumbing here. The next one has got the word Miami in it. The one underneath it has got Miami and it's got the word plumbers. So these are all on the first page of Google and they're doing two things right. They've got the intent correct in both the title and the meta description. Watch what happens though if I scroll and scroll and scroll. Let's go and look for somebody that is not on page one of Google. Um, let's just say they're on like page 10 or page 20. Um, as we scroll further and further down, the, we should notice that things become much less um, optimized. So, so, for example, if I look at Miami-Dade County, in the title, it just says plumbing license. There's no Miami in there. If we look at the description... It says journeyman plumber, but there's no mention of Miami. So this is where search engine optimization comes in. Let's say that Miami Dade wanted me to do their SEO for them. One of the first things that I would do if they wanted to show up higher in the search results for plumbing Miami is say, let's fix the title to include the keywords that Google is looking for. Let's fix this meta description to include the things that it's searching for. And then rather than it being buried all the way down on page eight, that should help it move up in the search results. Now, what I'm saying to you is the most basic, simple form of search engine optimization. Actually, it's more complicated than that because there's over 200 different things that Google's looking at when it's determining where a website should show up in its search results. Some of the things would be, how fast does the website load? What does the content of the website say? Is there enough content on there? Is the content that's on there valuable? What pictures are being used? Are those pictures relevant? Does the site load well on mobile devices? Does it load well on desktop devices? When people visit the site, are they actually sticking around? Are they viewing the pages or are they leaving straight away because it's a terribly built site? Does the site load quickly? Like there's over 200 different factors. So if I was to put Miami uh, plumbing Miami in the title and the description, I should see this move up quite a lot in the search results. As it starts getting closer towards the top, that's when we really need to start looking at everyone on the first page has got the keyword in the title and the description. So that's not going to be enough. What else can we possibly do to make this website better to then take it from position number 10 to position number five to position number two to position number one? So that's all, literally what we're doing is we're tweaking the website, we're making changes, waiting to see how Google responds, and then saying, okay, they were positive changes, let's do more of that. And then over time, we should see the website just keep moving up the search results until eventually it gets into one of those top three positions on the first page of Google. Yeah. 
So let's talk, uh, let's take another case study. Uh, as you know, we have a bookstore and we have a book on adversity. How would we start thinking about uh, driving traffic to a book on adversity? So the first thing that we would look to do is I would go to Google, first of all, and I, this is just my own process. I'd go to Google and I'd say something like define adversity. So d d adversity is a difficult or unpleasant situation. Okay, so I would say I need to find keywords that people are searching for in Google where they might be facing a difficult or unpleasant situation. OK, so if I was just to say books on adversity. 140 people a month are searching for books on adversity. OK, but how many people are searching for things like struggling with my faith? 70 people a month for searching for that. So if you was to show up number one in Google and your book, like somebody typed in struggling with my faith and your book showed up in the number one position for that particular keyword, you could say, are you facing adversity right now within your faith? If you're struggling with those things, this book could definitely help you. Are you struggling at work? Are you being persecuted at work? Um, and so my job as an SEO in the first instance is to find out what people are actually searching for and use that. So, so for example, here we can see 390 people are searching for prayer for unfair treatment at work. So if 390 people are searching for that, I could say to you, Oz, write an article about a prayer for unfair treatment at work we can optimize that to get it up to the first page of Google. And then somewhere in the article, you can talk about your book. Hey, you're here's a prayer for unfair treatment at work. I've actually written a book on adversity. And so this book might help you because, um, you, you know, you're facing your struggles, etc. And so in that instance, that could be one strategy that you could use to sell more copies of your book. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And so prayer for unfair treatment at work is one key word. Struggling at work is another. Struggling with your faith is another. Um, let's just say types of adversity. Emotional adversity, mental adversity, physical adversity. Okay. So if I was to say here, um, fear of rejection, if I was to see how many people are searching for a fear of rejection, 9,900 people a month are searching for a fear of rejection. So you could write a great article about fear of rejection. And then you could write, like, as you write in that, you could say, if you're facing a, a fear of a, um, rejection, you're going through some adversity at the moment, this book could really help you. It could draw you closer to God. If we get that to rank up the top of the search results, you'll have thousands of people reading that article and then there'll be a link to buy your book at the bottom of the article. Now, James, uh, you and I have uh, been using chat GPT uh, to help us in crafting some headlines and different things. How would you use that in this situation? So specifically for this, I'll just load up chat GPT now. Um, this is just an AI for anybody who's not sure what this is. But if I was to type in here now, write me a post about fear of rejection and how that would uh, and how a book about adversity would help the book is by oz hillman include some relevant info about oz uh, oops, about oz Okay, so this is now, this is, ChatGPT already knows some stuff about you, Oz, because it's just basically scraped the entire internet of everything that was ever written, and uh, it's got it all stored in the database. So if I ask it to do that now and just click, um, just tell it to do this, fear of rejection is a deeply ingrained emotion that affects countless individuals shaping their decisions and interactions in profound ways. 
Oz, uh, go, just shoot down to the next one. Oz Hillman is a respected author, speaker, and leader in, in the faith of our uh, work movement, blah, blah, blah. A book on adversity by Oz Hillman will likely explore the transformative power of facing and overcoming challenges. For someone grappling with the fear of rejection, Hillman's perspective could offer a refreshing and, and empowering viewpoint. So this is actually writing me a pretty decent article. I couldn't just post this as is. It's not going to be SEO optimized properly. But knowing what I know about SEO, I could take this content now and I could start working on it. Let's make sure we've got the the overcoming adversity keywords in there. Let's make sure that we've got the uh, fear of rejection keywords in there. And then I could post that to your blog, make sure that it's well optimized with the right keywords in the title, et cetera. And uh, we end up over time by, in, um, by working on continually optimizing and tweaking it until Google's happy with it, we can improve the results until eventually it shows up on the first page of Google. And then you've got fantastic content. I mean, this content was written in seconds. It's, it's scary how uh, amazing <laughs> yeah. GPT is, right? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I've, I've never even mentioned the word today. God is first to it. I just said include some stuff relevant to Oz Hillman. But it said here, today God is first, which reaches hundreds of thousands of readers around the globe. Like, it knows this stuff about you. <laughs> scary. <laughs> but, but, but it's scarily brilliant, actually. Yeah. Uh, when, AI, when AI first came out, I was one of those who was like, oh, my goodness, end times. We're getting into AI here, and this is, is going to take over the world. And But I know a lot more about it now, and I'm not scared of it because it's just a computer program that's got a library in it that just – that's. It can't think for itself. It will only ever do what we what we ask it to do, and it will just pull the information from its own library. But I find it very, very fascinating, and it's really, really helping marketers. It's actually brought the cost of SEO down because historically, I'd have had to hire a writer, somebody who's probably got some sort of journalistic experience to write that article for you. It would take a couple of days, and uh, they might charge me 200 bucks to write that one article. Well, now all I had to do was just ask it right one sentence and, and, and there's the content right so that's how i would use it in this instance um but this works for anybody my wife's a beauty salon owner and uh within our local area she's she's showing up at the top of the search results for nails and eyebrows and waxing and laser hair removal and tattoo removal and skin tag removal and i i can when she brings out a new product or service, I can go to chat, chat, chat TPT, tell them what the new product or service is. I can give it information from our wife's website and say, this is who Lydia is and what she's about. Can you write a new article asking people to book in for this new treatment and, and explain the benefits of it? And so it, it, in that same way, this like can work in any niche um, for, for a, any business that wants more, to sell more of their product or service can utilize SEO to get to the top of the search results and get more business from it. So people that may not be familiar with chat GPT, how do they uh, use that? How do they access it? Cause it's, uh, uh, it's really uh, free. They have a free version of it. Yeah. So they have a free version or the, I use the premium version, which is $20 a month. But if you need to get a lot of content for your website or, um, whatever that may look like, um, you know, uh, Oz, you asked me to write a bio and I copied and pasted my bio into ChatGPT and I said, hey, can you just tell me if this is a, a, a good bio? And it said, hey, here's some tweaks you can make to it to make it more professional. Awesome. And, and why was it able to do that? Because, because in its database, it's got loads and loads of articles about what makes a good professional bio. So it can reference that and then tweak what you've done um, to make something better. So um, I just went completely off track there and forgot what the question was. So just <laughs> no, uh, we were talking how, about how, how can they get how, in how to access chat? Yeah. If they just go to chat.openai.com, um, it'll ask them to sign up for a free account. And then once they've signed up for a free account, they can just log in and message ChatGPT. Yeah they can just describe what they're after and and then push that button and it'll put it out in literally seconds. It's amazing. 
So let's shift a minute and let's talk about some sec- success stories you've had in helping companies uh, with their SEO. Absolutely. So if I just go to Google right now, um, and I'm just going to start off by just typing in label makers. Whoops. Yep. Label makers. You can see here, label makers gets 165,000 searches a month. And um, this here, the label makers, is actually one of my clients, the label makers. So they're ranking, I've got them ranking at the top of the Google search results for something that gets 165,000 searches a month. And uh, if I um, if I just go just in my own desktop, just search for label, you'll see here, these are all of the reports that I sent to them. The label makers, I've done some stuff around wine and sports nutrition and whiskey labels, but the label makers January was a report I wrote for them sh- uh, a short while ago. Uh, label makers February, uh, oh, these are last year's result um, ones, by the way. Here's here's the one the report that I did for them in January. Um, so that's that's a really good success story. It's highly competitive term. There's multiple people searching for it, and I've got them ranked at the top of the search results. Um, just bear with me one second. Um, skin tag removal, Wigan. Wigan's not a massive town, but skin tag removal, Wigan, 50 people a month for searching for that. Here's my wife's website, Art Tribal Brows and Beauty. And she's ranking for beauty salon billing. And uh, basically, she's just ranking for an absolute ton of keywords that are driving significant traffic to her website. Um, Oz, you've seen what I'm doing with your website currently. Um, I've got... Uh, just bear with me one second. Um, big, big clients that I've got, Provision Living, they're actually in the United States. And this is the beauty of SEO. Um, although I'm in the UK, I can work with clients all over the world. So Provision Living is one of my biggest clients. They've actually got 21 nursing homes all all, uh, all over the US, um, in Michigan, uh, so let's say, yeah, in, in, in the state of uh, Michigan, Tennessee, uh, Missouri, um, Ohio, um, they're literally all over the place, right? And um, I'm ranking them at the top of the Google search, search results for many, many, uh, many, many different uh, keywords. Just bear with me one second. Provision Living at Forest Hills, ranking number one in Forest Hills. Um, they're ranking in number one in the organics. You can see I'm ranking number one in the maps. This is an interesting one where Google says that it's got no search volume. But we can see through Google Analytics that it is actually driving traffic through to their website. And as I said, these have got 21 different communities. We've got them ranked at the top of the Google search results for most of them. Um, Other success stories, uh, all Florida Safety Institute. Um, He had 13 driving schools in Florida. We had him ranking at the top of the Google search results for that. Um, One of the things uh, you and I had a meeting uh, this week and we found that we had a 36% increase in traffic to the TGIF site because of some of the things you've done. Now it does, this doesn't happen overnight in most cases. How long does it usually take for people to see some real, uh, you know, positive activity on their, their sites? Well, well, this is interesting because you said earlier, we've been, we've been working together for a little over a month. I started working on your SEO uh, at the is the thirty thirtieth of November was when you agreed and said, "Yep, yeah, let's do this." So all of December, all of January, all of February, it's been three months, and um, it takes a little while to get started. Obviously, in the first month, I was doing a lot of your keyword research and trying to figure out what people were searching for and mapping out the content to the pages. Um, And then the second month, it was like, okay, let's go in and actually tweak the content and make sure it's okay. And we're now starting to see the fruits of all that labor and work. Because as you said, I was able to say to you, hey, Oz, if we compare February's traffic to your website to January's traffic to your website, you've seen a 36% increase in the number of people that are visiting your website. And so, yeah, I mean, it really depends on how competitive a search term is. If, if you consider my wife's salon, skin tag removal Wigan, I mean, there's probably only a handful of beauty salons that are that are targeting that keyword, and Wigan is not a massive area. If you compare that, say, to Plumber Miami, 
obviously Miami is a huge area and there's going to be a lot of plumbers that are trying to get to the number one spot. So a good rule of thumb really is to say for low to medium competition keywords, SEO is like a three to six month process. And then anything that's kind of like medium, you might be looking at six to nine months. And then there's certain keywords that are just going to be like, we probably need to go back to the drawing board and find easier keywords to rank for. So for example, I, I it, it would be a very, very difficult and expensive process for me to try and rank somebody number one for the search volume loans or mortgages as, as a single keyword. If I if I went to Google now and I just type in mortgage, um, you can see that it gets 450,000 searches per month. And the people that are at the top in the UK compare the market.com. They're like a national company that's got a multi-million pound marketing budget. So they're going to be pushing out tens of thousands of articles every month. And they've got an entire team of pe people that are uh, optimizing their website and, and doing everything that's required. So if somebody came to me and said, I wanted to rank number one for the single term mortgage, I would say it's unrealistic. Now, of course, we could change that to say bad credit mortgages. And um, let's just say London. OK, this is what most brokers are going to go after. Now, the search volume there is too low at only 10 searches a month. But let's just take out the word London and see how many people are searching for bad. There's still 12,000 people searching for bad credit mortgages. And um, it, we might find that it's a little bit easier to rank for that. Or if I was to say secured loans, London, as a keyword. Um, only 10 searches a month. That's not a good one. Secured loans, Manchester. And this is, again, this is all part of the process. What keywords should we rank for? My job as an SEO is to look at how many people are searching, how easy is it going to be to rank, how quickly can we get to rank, and does it make financial sense to go after this? Now, yeah. there, are, there, there are some SEO companies that might say, oh, you want to rank number one for mortgages? Fine, I'm going to take $1,500 a month off you, and I'm going to try my best. But all that's going to happen is... In six months, nine months, 12 months from now, the person's not going to be ranked at the top of Google because it was an impossible keyword to go after, and then they'll be disillusioned with the process. So it's all about managing expectations. As I said to you before, these low competition keywords, three to six months, and that's typically what I'm looking for when working with local businesses like plumbers, electricians, driving schools. Let's find the keywords to start off with that are the low-hanging fruit that can see you some results and get you a return on your investment. And then if you want to reinvest some of that money into going after some of the more competitive keywords, we can do that. But let's get your results as quickly as we can. Yeah, let's let's talk, uh, for those who are kind of in the beginner stage of this, talk to us about Google Analytics. What is it and what's the use of that? Google Analytics is a tool that you can install on your website and it shows you how many people are visiting your website, what pages of your website you're, they're visiting, um, how they're interacting with your website. Google can give you access to all of that information, which is hugely beneficial. So I've installed Google Analytics onto your website, Oz, and then I'm able to show you every time we have a call, I dive into analytics and say, we had 50 people hit your subscription link, or we had 30 people um, visit this page, 80 people visit that page. Um, and, and, and we can break that data down and say, you've got more people using desktop devices than mobile devices, or people don't like this particular page of your website because every time they click on it, they leave within two seconds. We need to fix something. It's really, really good to get that level of data from Google. And again, that's all part of the overall SEO um, process. Uh, any client of mine, I will install Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and, and really just open up the what's happening with the website to, to the business owner. Does Google charge for Google Analytics? No, it's a free service. And so they just... Uh, if they wanted to add that to their website, do they just go to Google Analytics and then follow the prompt? Exactly. Analytics.google.com. Okay. And then um, 
they 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 just they there's a track they sign up for it and then there's a tracking code that Google asks them to add to their website. If they want to do it themselves, they can speak to their web developer and say, "Can you just put this code on the website?" And again, if they want access to that information, Oz, um, I do offer an SEO coaching program where I teach all of this stuff called Ranking Rabbit. But if they don't want to do that and they're just like, you know, I'd rather pay somebody to do it, then then I'd love for them to just contact me and say, hey, James, what would you charge me to do my SEO for me? And yeah. Uh, give, out, give out your information, how people can connect with you or uh, view any uh, websites or whatever. Yeah. So one of my primary websites, my, my, my business is called uh, Leo Rose Media, but the website address is wejustrank.com. Wejustrank.com. Rank.com. Okay. Wejustrank.com. And um, yeah, it's got all of my contact details on here. Here's a load more case studies. And, and, and this goes into you asking how long does this stuff take? So uh, commercial carpeting. Um, this is actually a client that's in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, sorry, Dalton, Georgia. They're, they're in Dalton, Georgia. Um, Georgia. Um, their website was just a little bit stuck. So they was in position seven. And um, I, I noticed that there was just a couple of small things that needed tweaking. So I tweaked those things and they went from seventh to third <laughs> in two weeks. I don't know whether you can see this because it's blurry. Yeah. But that's yeah. over 6,000 over 6, searches a month. Huge, like the amount of inquiries they got increasing just as a result of doing that. This next one, uh, driving school Gainesville, <laughs> 60 people searching per month. They went from six to first in one month. Um, they're not always uh, that quick. So just to, just to really sort of be clear on that, they're not always that quick. But um, mortgage broker Chester from 120th to top three within six weeks. St. John's Forest Homes for sale from 10th to 5th in two months. Um, you can see here multiple different niches. And so if anyone wanted to get in contact, they could literally just go to wejustrank.com and uh, they can just click on the contact, fill in the form, and or, or get there's my phone number and there's my email. Um, I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody. Um, if all they need me to do is just do a quick audit of the website and tell them what, what the current state of affairs are, I'd be more than happy to do that. Awesome. Hey, you need SEO or no, you don't need SEO or this is what it's typically going to cost for SEO. Um, SEO is an investment, Oz. As yes. I said, it can take three to six months. People need to be aware that they're paying up front for the service before they see the results because they pay me to do the work. I make the tweaks. I give them a report to show them what's been done and how long, like, if there's any improvements. But they're going to pay until they hit the first page of Google and start seeing a return. But once they're on the first page of Google they just get all of that free traffic from Google. And so um, at that stage, they can say, hey, we don't need to do SEO anymore. You've achieved everything you wanted to achieve. Or they can say, okay, you hit the brief. Let's see if there's more keywords. Let's see if we can grow the business even further. Let's see if we can go into another city. Um, and we just keep going and just keep increasing the profits. As long as the rankings are going up and uh, web leads are going up, there's there's no reason to stop. Just, just, just continue and... Uh, Everyone's happy. Yeah. Well, this is awesome. I, I, and you've really made uh, made it as simple as uh, uh, you can in terms of, you know, a lot of this stuff is very complex, but you've made it very simple to understand. So I want to encourage everybody, if you you need to build traffic to your website, James is your man and he's doing a great job for us. And so uh, I just don't, I just hope not everybody jumps on there because I, he's going to work for me some. And so you don't, can't take all of his time. now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, James, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, tell us about this and, and uh, pray that we can all build our kingdom businesses. And James is a kingdom leader and just uh, seeks the Lord about, how he works with people and just been a, a real blessing to be with. So James, thanks. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week. <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you everyone for listening and, and feel free to get in touch. If you're already paying another marketing company to do your marketing for you and you're not sure if you're getting value for money, I'm more than happy to take a look and tell you, Hey, yeah, they're doing a great job. I am a Christian and, uh, 
I I like to run my business with honesty and integrity. So if if your existing marketing company is doing a great job, I'll absolutely tell you that they're doing a great job and tell you to give them a pat on the back. Um, so feel free to reach out and ask, and I'll be I'll be more than happy to uh, to do that for you. If that if all that does is give you peace of mind, then brilliant. You know we we all win in that situation. So. Guys, thank you so much. I thank you really very much for having me on. And uh, I, I look forward to potentially hearing from some of you. All right, James. God bless. Take care.